Salve Regina, Mate misericordiae, Vita dulce do, et spes nostra salve. Ade clamamus, exules fili heve, ad te suspiramus, gementes et plentes, in ac lacrimarum vale. Ea ego, advocata nostra, ilos tuos, misericordes oculos, ad nos converte. Etie Iesu, benedictum fructum ventris tui, nobis post hoc exilium ostende. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Now, a couple of things today. First off, it's cold outside. For those of you who are watching online, I had minus 21 uh, over at the parish house earlier today, and I just want to pray for everybody across the country who's being affected by these terrible storms. I talked with my, my brother-in-law last night over in Indianapolis and talked about the layer of ice and the snow that's coming and all the people who, after just gotten a big dumping of snow out on the East Coast, now they're looking at whatever's coming and we were talking about all the different elements and, you know, fruit that's freezing on, on, the, on the vine and the trees right now. I said to Father Lee this morning, I said, remind me why we live here? And he said, because of the blue sky. It is beautiful, but it's cold. So we just want to pray for all those who also suffer from the cold. Now today is also the feast of St. Blaise, bishop and martyr. Some of you might remember the blessing of the throats. Yesterday was Candlemas for the presentation of the Lord. Traditionally, we bless the candles that are used in the church on that day. And with those blessed candles, then we do the blessing of the throats. And so for those of you who are here today, right after the homily, I'll move the camera back. And what we'll do is we'll just have, for those who'd like to receive the blessing, just come on up like you would for communion. And I will give you the blessing of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, that you would be healed of any ailments of the throat. Okay, so that'll happen in just a little bit. So for those of you watching at home, just a little different than what we would normally do for a daily Mass. We continue our journey with King David. And David's coming to the end of his life. Now for those of you who've been listening, I've been talking about this in the daily homilies on my website. But today it's that passing on of some wisdom. David has seen the span of his life. And he wants to share some important things with his son. I'll talk about that advice in my homily today. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You came to call the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, the supplications your people make under the patronage of the martyr, Saint Blaise and grant that they may rejoice in peace in this present life and find help for life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
a reading from the first book of Kings. When the time of David's death drew near, he gave these instructions to his son Solomon. I am going the way of all flesh. Take courage and be a man. Keep the mandate of the Lord your God following his ways and observing his statutes, commands, ordinances, and decrees as they are written in the law of Moses, that you may succeed in whatever you do, wherever you turn, and the Lord may fulfill the promise he made on my behalf when he said, if your sons so conduct themselves that they remain faithful to me with their whole heart and with their whole soul, you shall always have someone of your line on the throne of Israel. David rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The length of David's reign over Israel was 42 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 37 years in Jerusalem. Solomon was seated on the throne of his father David with his sovereignty firmly established. The word of the Lord. Lord, you are exalted over all. Lord, you are exalted over all. Blessed may you be, O Lord, God of Israel, our Father, from eternity to eternity. Lord, you are exalted over all. Yours, O Lord, are grandeur and power, majesty, splendor, and glory. Lord, you are exalted over all. Lord, you are exalted over all. Yours, O Lord, is the sovereignty. You are exalted as head over all. Riches and honor are from you. Lord, you are exalted over all. In your hand are power and might. It is yours to give grandeur and strength to all. Lord, you are exalted over all. the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, wherever you enter, whatever house you enter, Stay there until you leave from there. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there. Shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and they preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. In my life as a parish priest, I have had the privilege to be with many people at the end of their life. Sometimes alone, sometimes with one or two people, sometimes with their whole family. And I, I often, if I'm working with people and praying with people who are in hospice, where we all kind of know that we know how this is gonna land. You know, we, we've taken steps and we're just trying to keep people fairly comfortable but they know that they're, they're on a path that leads from this life to the next. They know they're going to die. I've observed two things that I find incredibly powerful and beautiful. 
I, I will tell people when they're making that switch to hospice, especially when there's certain signs going on in their body that they can see, I say, hey, don't waste this time. This is a powerful time to tell the people in your life that you love them, to be about healing, so that if God calls you home this day, the last words you say are words that are healing and wholesome, holy and powerful, beautiful, precious. You see, when we know that we're coming to the end of our life, our words are amplified. We know that in those moments, it, it's a very profound experience. And to see people do that, to see people from their deathbed, from that bed that's set up in the house or from the nursing home, to look somebody in the eye and say, I love you. It's an incredibly powerful thing to witness how people will do that and amplify that. And similarly, when I see it happen and I see people respond to that, it changes us. It's supposed to change us. That when we know we're at the end of our life to share whatever is our deepest longing, our most sincere desire, the distilled wisdom that we've learned through the school of hard knocks, it has power. David's doing that here. He, he knows that the days that he has left on this world are, are close to ending. And he, he wants to make it clear to Solomon, learn from my success, learn from my mistakes. We're talking about David here. This is the guy who fought lions and tigers and bears when he was a shepherd. This is a guy who took down Goliath, the mighty warrior and giant. This is David who consolidated the kingdom and who led the armies of Israel and, and established the kingdom and, and its height, its power. And this is David who, from being a shepherd in the hills, is handing over to his son something amazing, a, a kingdom that was formed through the 40-some years of his reign. And so here's my advice, son. Here's what I've learned. Now, this is also, besides all the success, David who committed his sins. David who saw all sorts of tensions in the kingdom. David who watched the kingdom at times get, get strained to the breaking point. Take courage, be a man, he says, and keep the mandate of the Lord. Son, follow God. Son, stay close to God. Son, live in a godly way. That's my advice, son. From the school of hard knocks, I've distilled it down. Take courage, be a man, follow the Lord. It's not a bad lesson for all of us. It's not a bad reminder because we can take that to heart and say, okay, Lord, where do I need to call upon courage? Help me to live my life, my vocation. And Lord, help me to stay close to you. Help me to walk with you. Help me to be guided by your light. We all make mistakes. We all sin. We all have our own hot messes. And as I've been fond of saying through this journey from 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, now into 1 Kings, God walks with the people every step of the way. God does not abandon them, but continues to be present, even when they're going in every different direction. And so David is saying, stay close to the Lord. And how often do we need to be reminded of that? How often is it essential that we take that to heart and refresh our memory that a life rooted in the Lord becomes a blessed life to be able to face whatever challenges, acknowledge our sins, strive to repent and grow closer to Jesus. That daily reminder, follow the Lord, stay close to God, strive to live the commandments. Now, we know that for a time Solomon will do that. We're going to read about that now in the, the next few passages. We also know that there's going to be some missteps. But folks, as we see how God was present through all of the very human elements that we see in these readings, God's present to us. So may we run to the Lord yet again today and every day, striving to be close to Christ in all that we say and do. God bless you all. Now, what's going to happen next is I'm going to bless throats. So I'm going to move the camera back.
Then I'm going to bless back here for Father Lee and Sue, and then I'm going to come down in front. For those of you who'd like to receive the blessing, just come forward, hands folded. I will place the candles by your neck, and at the end of the prayer, just say, Amen. When I'm done with that, folks, I'll come back to the altar and we'll resume with Mass. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious, and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may you be healed of all ailments of the throat. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may you be healed of all ailments of the throat. Through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, may you be healed of all ailments. folks just so you can see. Certainly for all of you at home, pray for those of you who are sick. So we all now please stand to offer our prayers for our needs and the needs of the church. We pray for all who are suffering, physically, but also those who suffer body, mind, heart, and soul. That through the healing power of Christ, that we might find comfort and relief, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who dedicate their lives in service of healing doctors and nurses, caregivers, that through their efforts people are comforted and find peace, we pray to the Lord. 
We pray for those who comfort those who are suffering in bodily needs, especially through corporal works of mercy. We pray that through their efforts we might be inspired to alleviate the suffering of others. We pray to the Lord. Pray for all those who suffer from the cold, but also those who suffer from violence and war. We pray to the Lord. We want to pray this day for the intention of this Mass for Bill Goligoski. We pray to the Lord. And finally, for all of you at home, for the prayers that you offer in the comment line, and for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. And through the intercession of St. Blaise, Bishop and Martyr, be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection 
until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, James our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have praised you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress and useless worry, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.
Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Just a couple of announcements. So, I want to just continue to invite folks online who are watching, but also in person, that the World Synod listening sessions are available. You can either go online, go right to the Diocese of Superior. We have a link that's being sent out on our social media so you folks can pull it up, go through the little process, be able to reflect on these questions and then answer them. Or we're also going to have that listening session on Saturday, not this Saturday, but a week from Saturday on February 12th. Uh, more information will be announced on that. But I really do want to encourage people, use the online resource if you wish. It's easy, it's very simple, and it goes directly into um, the, the process we need to do to kind of pull all of these together and, and organize them to send them on. For all of you at home, please keep sharing uh, through Facebook. And have a great day. Stay warm. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Have a great day.